Welcome back to Autism at Home, brought to you by us at Early Autism Project Malaysia through our non-profit initiative, The Hope Project. My name is Josheben Isaacs, and thank you so much for joining us. Well, this is the last lesson of the Building Attention Skills series. At this point, we have talked about how to teach the most basic attention tasks of matching, file folders, sorting, puzzles, and even given more suggestions of attention tasks. This final lesson will look at some of the most common troubleshooting scenarios we might encounter when trying to teach attention. There are three general categories of problem scenarios that can happen. First, checking if our three key strategies of ABA are strong. Second is addressing the issue of stimming when we need a child to focus. That is when a child is stimming so much that their attention is very affected. Thirdly, environmental factors that affect attention. So first, let's look at the three key strategies of ABA. Break skills down, reinforce, and practice. You might have heard us mention these several times on Autism at Home, but that is really because of how important they are. First, check the skill is broken down enough. It is so easy to get excited by wanting to teach a child a new skill so quickly that we move too quickly or the skill is not broken down enough. We have shown several examples on Autism at Home of how to break a skill down, but also remind that skills can always be broken down further if a child needs it. You can usually tell when you need to break the skill down when a child is stuck on a step for a very long time. Let's take a look at this items list we saw in the puzzles lesson. In this example, the puzzle was broken down by number of pieces, two at a time. But what if this is still too difficult? We can break it down like this, literally piece by piece. We can even break it down by starting with pieces on the edges first before working on the center and then finally randomizing the pieces. As you can tell, breaking skills down requires a lot of patience and sometimes takes a very long time. But it does pay off in the long run as it helps our children feel successful and keeps them from getting frustrated or giving up too quickly. Secondly, is the child getting enough practice? Our children at EAP who receive 35 hours of therapy from Mondays to Fridays can practice a skill between six to seven times a day. And each time can involve three to four trials in one sitting. So really that works out to practicing a skill maybe up to 28 times a day, 140 times a week, that's a lot of practice. Now for parents, especially working parents, this may not be realistic to do at all. It is really just to illustrate how important practice is and why we see that progress. So if you can, work together with your spouse to set aside as many learning times as you can throughout the day. And don't forget natural opportunities for learning too, like giving your child a matching task while you're preparing dinner. Third, reinforcement. Reinforcement and motivation sits at the very bottom of our building blocks of learning. This tells us how important reinforcement is to always ensure it is strong enough and something a child is willing to work for. Remember, the harder the skill, the higher the reinforcement needs to be. You may also need to do constant motivation assessments, that is comparing and trying out new reinforcers, just to make sure you've always got the best ones at your fingertips. Next, let's look at self-stimulatory behaviours or stimming behaviours. There are actually many schools of thought when it comes to stimming. Some believe it should be encouraged, while others believe it should be reduced. The reality is, though, that for many children on the spectrum, stimming is part of their needs. And just like we as adults need some type of downtime, or perhaps even have a fidget, stimming can oftentimes fulfill sensory needs of children. The challenge, though, is when self-stimulatory behaviours make it difficult 
for a child to learn or to focus. And that is when we would try to identify their genuine sensory need and how can we provide those opportunities in a more appropriate context outside of the learning time. Or even find a way for a child to request for those sensory or stimming breaks. Find out more about how to find alternative replacement and expansion ideas for stimming behaviours in our Making Learning Fun series on increasing interest. Whatever skill we practice more, we get stronger at. This includes stimming. Hence, the efforts of trying to improve attention can become twice as hard if we spend only an hour or 30 minutes a day building attention, but our child is spending another eight hours of that same day not engaging or participating in some sort of self-stimulatory behaviour. So try to work out a schedule for your child to follow every day and try to include as many meaningful activities as possible. For example, try incorporating the many attention tasks they have learned into their day itself. Not only are they getting extra practice, they're also not practicing just stimming. There are also times where a child may not be motivated to learn at all or to do any functional tasks apart from participating in repeated or repetitive behaviours. We do try to set them up to be successful and try to target just perhaps 10 seconds or 20 seconds of attention and then gradually build up from there. At the same time, we continue to do motivation assessments to find other sources of reinforcement. Thirdly, let's look at environmental factors that affect attention. The rule of thumb is that the more distractions there are, the harder it is for a child to pay attention. Here is a list of some of the distractions that can happen. Objects like colour pencils, erasers and books on the table. Sounds around them like the sound of the TV, people talking on the phone or walking back and forth. This can be particularly challenging for children with sound sensitivities. Toys on the floor or out in the open. Even colourful paintings and objects all over the walls, which can be distracting to some children. Set your child up for success by initially minimising these distractions if you are not actively targeting them. That is, if your child is only working on doing a puzzle, Focus only on puzzles. If they need to learn to tolerate distractions, make sure they have mastered the puzzle first before incorporating distractions one by one. We would start by increasing either visual distractions or audio distractions, and then gradually introducing other children to the room as well, as all this will help build a child's ability to attend amidst distractions. Sounds a lot like school. Finally, a note on screen time. Try to be mindful of how much screen time your child receives on a daily basis. Excessive screen time is suggested to be linked to poorer language, attention span, and listening skills. In fact, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that children below 18 months receive no screen time. Children between 18 to 24 months receive up to 30 minutes a day, and for children between two to five year olds to receive a maximum of an hour a day. I remember my first ever experience working with a little guy in Perth, Australia. I had literally gone for a day of training and was on my own with this very cute boy. But as I tried to work with him, his eyes would glaze over and he would keep repeating or scripting sentences from Nemo, like fish are friends, not food, fish are friends, not food. And you could see him replaying the scenes in his mind again and again. If your child does get screen time, select good quality programs that are age appropriate for them. Better yet, try to participate with them and comment on what they are watching to build language. Do try to avoid those non-verbal cartoons where you can, as it really doesn't promote building language either. And very importantly, do try your best to not allow them to watch the same videos again or the same scenes repeatedly. Because remember key strategy number three, providing sufficient practice? That also works in the reverse. 
and overwatching scenes will strengthen that behavior or obsessive interest. So those are the three main troubleshooting areas that might happen when teaching attention. Always ensure that skills are broken down, there is reinforcement and sufficient practice. Keep your child occupied throughout the day with meaningful activities to prevent opportunities of low attention. Finally, keep the environment clear of unnecessary distractions. And do be mindful of how much screen time your child is receiving as well as what they are watching. Now, it's your turn. If you are encountering any challenges with building your child's focus and attention at home, check out this list. Could addressing any of these areas help improve your child's success? Well, that's a wrap on our Building Attention Skills series. Thank you so much for staying with us. We want to take this time to honour the families who put so much time and effort into wanting to help their children succeed. You are the true heroes, and we truly hope these lessons have been helpful to you and your child. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you need more personalised help. Also, do check out our free online resource platform, Autism at Home, if you'd like to get the corresponding articles and downloadables. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram and Facebook to stay updated. Autism at Home is brought to you by The Hope Project, which is actually our non-profit arm of Early Autism Project Malaysia. All the content development, our clinical expertise, and all of our time is completely borne by EAP Malaysia, and the production of these videos so far are funded solely through donations and fundraising. So if you find these resources helpful and would like to contribute in some way, please do pledge a donation at autismmalaysia.com slash the hope project. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you soon.